I'd like to begin by thinking a little bit about the natural environment of the horse. So if we think about the horse in its natural environment, horses are nomadic animals. They will roam over several kilometres per day, somewhere between 8 to 26 kilometres per day, as reported in the literature. So they don't tend to stay in one spot, they're moving around, and as they're moving around, they're eating as they go. And that's why we talk about horses as being creatures that graze little and often. And if we look at their time budget and we look at what they spend their time doing during the day, around about 16 to 20 hours of their time per day is spent grazing. And the type of feeds that they will graze will be low quality feeds. And by low quality, I mean low nutritional quality feeds that are very high in fiber. So what horses will typically do if you watch them in the natural environment is they'll take a, a couple of bites of the forage, they'll move on a couple of steps, they'll take another couple of bites and they'll continue to do this throughout the day. The other thing to remember about horses uh, is that they're highly sociable animals and they've developed this as a survival mechanism. They also communicate primarily through body language and they're prey animals. So what that means is they have the fight or flight response. So all of you who have horses will know that if they get a fright, they tend to run off and then they stop and they have a look to see why they're running. And that's their instinct. That's how they have evolved. That's how they're motivated. They will run off when they're frightened. But when we put them in an environment where they're confined and they can't get away from what they perceive as danger, they will fight. So that's why we talk about the fight or flight mechanism. But we're looking here specifically at the gastrointestinal tract and the intestinal system of the horse was designed to process high amounts of low nutritional quality forage. And as I said before, ingested on an almost continual basis. So if we want to take this knowledge and apply this to how we feed horses in the domestic environment, what we know is, is that the principal diet of horses based on how its intestinal system has evolved is forage. And as I've mentioned, we have domesticated the horse. If we look at when we first started to use horses, the first records of this are in cave paintings around 15,000 years ago where we started to use horses um, to hunt to help us hunt for food. And looking over the years, horses have been used for a number of different uh, activities. So we've used them for riding and haulage. We've used horses in war, and many uh, victories are attributed to using horses in war. Uh, they were used in battle, actually, until the end of the Second World War. We've used horses for meat production as well, and then we've also relied on horses for our agricultural industry, certainly up until the early uh, 20th century. So let's think a little bit more about how we've domesticated the horse. Horses have been described as farm animals, but actually there's quite a difference between a stable riding horse and other farm species. We don't generally keep horses as production animals, so nowadays we tend to refer to horses as companion animal species. But they differ slightly from other companion animals such as cats and dogs as we don't share our living spaces with uh, horses. And the contact that we have with our horses is primarily through grooming them and riding them and feeding them. So what we currently use horses for is uh, in the majority of cases for recreational purposes. We use them for breeding, we use horses in sport and to some extent we use them for meat production or so certainly not as much in developed uh, countries uh, such as the UK for example but they are used uh, for meat production in, in other countries. But we don't use the horses much anymore or very little in the military We've dramatically decreased its use in agriculture and as a mechanism of transportation, but we've hugely increased how we use horses in sport and in leisure, uh, for leisure purposes, and particularly, as I said, in developed countries. 
Horses are often regarded as well as a luxury item, sometimes a, a status symbol. And we often keep our horses then in these really luxury environments. But these environments are very different from the natural environment. So if you think about the horse in its natural environment, it's continually grazing and moving and the horse won't naturally uh, confine itself. It won't voluntarily confine itself. Um, but we do confine horses. We, we put them in stables and we do this to help us manage our pasture to control the feed intake in our horses, to keep them cleaner so that when we come to riding them, they're not um, muddy and therefore that doesn't cause problems. We often clip our horses so that when they develop this thick winter coat, it limits the extent to which we can ride them without them sweating. So we clip the hair and therefore we have to put them in a stable to keep them warmer or um, reduce their exposure to the elements, particularly in the winter months. And also, we often stable horses to reduce the risk of injury. Uh, often horses will incur more injuries when they're turned out at pastures, and especially our expensive sport horses.